All right, guys. How you doing? Hope your day's going well. Um, I've been presented. There has been kind of a recent development uh, that's been a lot circulated uh, in the news media and around kind of my more traditionalist circles, um, <clears throat> and that is this question of uh, Pope Francis's uh, statements regarding homosexuality. Um, not being a criminally punishable offense um, in certain places. So, <clears throat> if we want to go through the article here, and this is the actual who it was done, who the interview was constructed by, um, this AP uh, AP News. Pope Francis criticized laws that criminalize homosexuality as "quote unquote" unjust. So that's actually obviously a quote from the Pope, saying God loves all His children. Obviously, that's not a quote. Um, just as they are, just as they are, and called <clears throat> on Catholic bishops who support the laws to welcome LGBTQ people into the church. Being homosexual isn't a crime, Francis said during an exclusive interview Tuesday with the Associated Press. So I've seen a lot of people say that, like, <clears throat> that this is him saying that it's not a sin. Um, that's very clearly not what he's saying. Um, he actually did smack down uh, and kind of rein in the German bishops who were hypothesizing and talking about blessing same-sex unions. He went out of his way to uh, threaten to uh, defrock, which is to re reject and pull their priestly status um, from the church if they didn't recant those things. Um so <clears throat> he is obviously talking about having a tender hand and stuff like that. Um, Francis acknowledged that Catholic bishops in some part of the world support laws that criminalize homosexuality or discriminate against LGBTQ people. Um, and he himself referred to the issue in terms of sin, but he attributed such at attitudes to cultural backgrounds and said bishops in particular need to undergo a process of change to recognize the dignity of everyone. So, of course, under the traditional Christian understanding... Everybody is created in the Imago Dei, which is the image of God. So everybody is possessing of inherent dignity, um, inherent human respect and dignity under the law. Um, and so that's, everybody deserves that, not just, you know, uh, heterosexual people, also homosexual people and stuff like that. That doesn't condone the action, um, just as somebody who is um, threatened uh, or who's accused of murder should have the right to a fair trial and should have the right to, um, you know, to not just being killed on the spot or something for accusations or whatever their rights, so to speak, um, those are retained. Um, and so that's kind of what it seems like that's kind of the line he's going with. He's talking about kind of an, uh, a fairness under the law. Um, these bishops say, yeah, have to go, have to have to have a process of conversion, tenderness, please, as, God has for each one of us. Um, so, of course, Francis's comments, which were hailed by gay rights advocates as a milestone, are the first uttered by a pope about such laws. But they're also consistent with his overall approach to LGBTQ people and the belief that the Catholic Church should welcome everyone and not discriminate, which, of course, the church's primary goal is the salvation of souls, right? Um, and so he's basically making the claim that gay people should be ministered to, um, not simply, uh, shut out or not listened to, but obviously he would maintain the Catholic position that once you <clears throat> convert to Catholicism, that your homosexual practices would have to not take place anymore. Um, it seems to be very clear about this. Um, and so they, and it goes into further, but I wanted to, you know, kind of clear the air here. And I do understand why there's pushback, especially from my um, Islamic brothers and sisters, um, you know, that maybe this is going too far. Um, I would like to remind them as far as it goes about how the Catholic Church functions as an entity. Um, papal interviews, like if the Pope gets interviewed by a news station and he utters something and he says something that may not be in line with the historical teachings of the church uh those interviews are not magisterial teaching um it doesn't constitute binding law 
um, upon the Catholic, Catholic faithful. Popes are men, and they can have their opinions about things, and they can be create uh, right you know, pastoral addresses and stuff like that, but they cannot contradict the teachings of the faith, and the teachings of the faith magisterially is crystal clear when it comes to what homosexuality is, um, what harm that it can possibly bring to the human person, um, what harm it brings to society. Um, one of the things that I would like to um, cite here, and I'll put this link uh, down below, is you can go to the consideration regarding proposals to give legal recognition to unions between homosexual persons. And this goes into the Catholic beliefs. This is Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. This is the official magisterial teachings on these things. Positions on the problem of homosexual unions, arguments from reason against legal recognition of homosexual unions, positions of the Catholic politicians with regard to legislation in favor of homosexual unions. Um, yeah, so it, it's going to go into conclusion. The church teaches that respect for homosexual persons cannot lead in any way to approval. You can read it right here in conclusion. Church teaches that respect for homosexual persons cannot lead in any way to approval of homosexual behavior or to legal recognition of homosexual unions. The common good requires that laws recognize, promote, and protect marriage as the basis of the family, the primary unit of society. Legal recognition of homosexual unions or placing them on the same level as marriage would mean not only the approval of deviant behavior, with the consequence of making it a model in the present-day society, but would also obscure basic values which belong to the common inheritance of humanity. The church cannot fail to defend these values for the good of men and women and for the good of society itself. So, and of course, this is, this, this is directly from the Vatican's archives. This is the official teachings of the church. And now... If the Pope came out and made a ex cathedra statement where he is actually stating that he is changing this legis this this position, that would of course categorize him as potentially a heretic or potentially an anti pope, something of that nature. Could his position be corrected? Could he be misinformed? It, these all these all these things go into these types of discussions. It's not um, as simple as the news media presents it so i would implore my both muslim brothers and sisters and of course my my catholic friends who are probably maybe potentially in crisis do not trust the news media <laughs> as they are snakes they are liars they are vipers just as i would uh, assume that most of my muslim brothers and sisters would not trust the news media to proclaim the reality of their faith do not allow them to proclaim the reality of another traditional faith. They will not do it. They, they seek to liberalize everything. They seek to desecrate and bring down to lowliness and any holy institution that still exists on earth. That is their goal. That is what they want. So uh, I would say just be careful with kind of these knee-jerk critiques because the Catholic Church has existed for 2,000 years. Um, it has things in place to deal with mechanisms like this when things potentially go sideways to one way or they go sideways to another way to correct itself. The organization is built to do that. So when you start seeing a pope maybe straying a little bit potentially out of orthodoxy, there are systems to rein him in. Um, so we, that's why we are proclaimed to trust in this church, to trust in the method that Christ promised us the gates will not prevail against the church. So, um, those kinds of things are important. So I will link, um, the legal pen, le the, the whole, uh, the, the link about the congregation and the doctrine of the faith about legal penalties that can be taken against sodomy and society, all those things. Um, I just want to say that sacred scripture and the unanimous consensus of the church fathers and the church's infallible definitive magisterium. Um, have all taught unambiguously that sexual acts are only licit 
insofar as they take place within the unitive and procreative dimensions of a marriage between a man and a woman. That's just, that is the case. Therefore, it doesn't really matter who Pope Francis appoints as prefect of the dicastery for the doctrine of the faith, if he publishes anything contrary to what the church has taught definitively on these questions, then it is null and void. And we as Catholics would be in our perfect rights to resist it publicly. But he hasn't done that. Um, but I just want to make that clear. Um, the Pope expressed a prudential opinion on anti-sodomy laws, yet reiterated the moral teachings of the church on the matter. He made that clear in the interview. If you actually watch the interview, and you don't just read this secondhand thing, he was very clear about that. And the magisterium has ruled that there should be no legal recognition of homosexual unions and the homosexual acts should be publicly discouraged by the state. That is the official teaching of the church. So, furthermore, uh, the per se moral legitimacy of anti-sodomy laws as distinct from their prudential applicability uh, must be definitively held by a Catholic. So you can look at Pope Leo IX's Ad Splendium uh, Nitensis, the Third and Fourth Lateran Councils, St. Pius V's Apostolic Constitution, Cum Primum, all these things. There's numerous resources that we could fall upon um, to answer this kind of a question. But I just wanted to kind of put a little quick video out to talk about it, um, to go over what was actually said um, cause I know the all eyes are on me as a Catholic to what are you saying in response to this? But main point, main takeaway, don't be so quick to imagine that these, um, these innovators, these manipulators, these liars, predominantly scum of the earth reporters, truly, <laughs> um, broods of vipers that are going to be out there to say these things that the Pope said or that Muslims say or that Muslims did or whatever are going to be beacons of truth in this age of total uncertainty. They're not going to be. We need we need certainty. We need decisiveness. We need authority. We need tradition. And we need to remain steadfast in those things, in orthodoxy, not in the ways of the world, not in the swayings like reeds in the wind of man and of societies, and of, you know, <laughs> uh, all of the world order that we're dealing with right now, the, the, the NATO liberal Western world order that we currently all are inhabiting right now as they dominate the entire global spectrum. Um, we do not need to be told what our faith believes by those people. We have to know what our, what our faith says from the orthodox sources from the traditional sources from the magisterium itself from the scholars that's where it has to come from so just don't be quick brothers and sisters to judge it at face value that is all i implore you thank you and i hope that god blesses us all and that he is with us in all these dark times that exist for all of our families and all of the people that we love i'll talk to you guys soon thank you